Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to 2021. I'm your host, Carlos Correa. It's great being with you. We have lots to talk about. If you are new to the show, welcome and thanks for stopping by. This is actually my first show of the new year, episode eight. In this episode, I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on the recent chaos in our nation's capital. And I also got some emails to read from you, plus the new Wonder Woman movie and my recent trip to South Florida. Let's do this. Welcome to the podcast. So Conversation with the people who were with me. In the world. Hey everybody, bienvenidos, welcome to the show. This is Carlos Tonight, a fun podcast featuring the people I met during my 22-year career as a journalist. Plus, I introduce you to new voices and new places. I invite you to check out my website, carlostonight.com, for the latest on the show, listen to old episodes, and connect with me on social media. That's carlostonight.com. Can we talk? <laughs> There are a couple of things I thought about while I was watching the news this week with pro-Trump rioters storming the Capitol and lawmakers acting well, unlike legislators I've covered in the past. I don't know how or how nice I can say it. The images I saw were disturbing. The worst part for me was watching the way journalists covering these events were treated by those protesters. That photo of protesters taking camera equipment and tossing it in a big pile, it just, it infuriated me. Do you know how much an XLR cable costs or a microphone? (laughs) Um, A lot of money. Well, if you don't have, if you're not part of a big station, then yeah, it comes out of your pocket. But, um, you know, I'm just here thinking, what happened to peaceful protests and demonstrations? I don't care who you voted for or anything like that. I think that we should all act like we got some sense and respect one another, period. You know, I used to cover local politics, and it was fun. In fact, my first taste of the political world came in 2003 when I was a reporter in Ottumwa, Iowa, Have you ever heard of Ottumwa, Iowa? Me neither, until I moved there. I was hired to work at the ABC station in town. It was my first official on-air television job. Ottumwa is about 90 minutes southeast of Des Moines, and for me, it was a five-hour drive home to Chicago. Ottumwa is the hometown of comedian and actor Tom Arnold. It's the home of the American Gothic Farmhouse, I'm sure you've seen the famous picture. If not, follow me on Instagram and I'll post it there. That's Carlos Tonight on Instagram. Now, the community of Ottumwa is also known as the City of Bridges. And if you're a fan of the show MASH, the fictional character Radar O'Reilly, he's from Ottumwa. In 2003, I had the opportunity to interview John Edwards and his wife Elizabeth, Dick Gephardt and Howard Dean They were all making campaign stops ahead of the Iowa caucuses. John Kerry and vice president at the time, Dick Cheney, were also in town, but I never got the chance to interview them, although I really wanted to. Instead, I interviewed their campaign workers, volunteers and supporters, even Grammy winner Carol King. John Kerry ended up winning the Democratic presidential nomination and ran against incumbent George W. Bush. Kerry eventually lost the election, and I walked away with my first of 10 Iowa Broadcasting News Association awards. This one, in particular, was for political coverage. You know, back then, reporting was fun. Covering politics was fun. That all changed for me around 2015. Things got ugly. People began harassing me while I was reporting in the field. Sometimes I got threatened, but it wasn't just me. It was other reporters, too. I heard stories of people breaking into news vehicles and stealing their equipment. It, uh, to be honest with you, it became scary. Besides the equipment piled up at the Capitol this week, the most disturbing picture for me was the one with rioters standing near a sign that read, Murder the Media. I mean, come on, we're better than that. 
So I just want to say that I'm praying for the journalists out there who work tirelessly to tell stories every day, the field crews who are in the middle of it all, and especially to those multimedia journalists working alone without lunch or even a bathroom break. Stay strong. To be transparent, when I started this podcast, I didn't think people would listen to it, but it makes me happy to know that I do have some listeners out there, and that is so cool. Thank you. It means a lot. Okay, so one thing I want to do is from time to time read some of the awesome messages that I have received from you guys. So here's one from Erica. She wrote, Carlos, I'm so excited and proud that David is playing my father. Couldn't be more thankful. Thank you, Erica. Erica is the daughter of David Kramer, who was Selena's bodyguard. In the Netflix series Selena, actor David Fernandez Jr. plays David Kramer. And David Fernandez Jr. was my first guest on this podcast. And if you haven't seen the series yet, check it out. I can't wait for the rest of it to come out. Okay. Okay. David Kramer's sister, Sandra, also wrote and She said, I want to thank you for your kind words. He really liked working for Selena and being manager of her store. She was a really great, outstanding performer. Bless her family. Thank you, Sandra. Selena was indeed a great performer. I remember when she passed away, I wrote about the tragic event in my newspaper column in Chicago. I touched on what Selena meant to Latinos and to many fans out there. To this day, she's missed and loved. And watch for the Grammys because they're going to be doing a tribute to her. So watch out for that. Um, this next one is from Lucha James from Houston. He wrote, Amazing Luchador. Of course, he was talking about Vanium, the nuclear warrior. He was my guest for episode three of the podcast. And I agree. Vanium is amazing, real cool guy, down to earth, and he's got a lot of stories. So this one came in from West Palm Mermaid, whoever you are, wink, wink. Um, she writes, Carlos is a true storyteller with great interview skills. He really, know Aww. he really knows how to bring out the best in his guests. The show is quick, witty, and touches on current topics that really encapsulates where our society is right now. Thank you so much. That was nice. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, this one, Martha, my Martha, my dear, wrote, looking forward to adding this to my favorite podcast. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. This one, J Day 619. Oh, I know her. I know her. Okay. <laughs> um, J Day 619 wrote, Carlos is a great storyteller and his stuff is fast paced, captivating, and will have you entertained and informed. He has great experience from his years in TV news. You will love his hilarious and genuine personality. Highly recommended. Si, sí, si, sí, me gusta. Okay. Um, I like that one. That was really nice. Thank you, JDay619. Sorry, I'm reading other <laughs> uh, multitasking. So thank you. Um, I really appreciate that. That was really nice. Um, that was like the best. Thank you for the comments. Keep them coming. You know what? Next time, I think I'm going to read some of the messages that I have collected over the years from viewers. I might have some funny ones somewhere um, to share. So in the meantime, thank you. Now, um, if you have any questions or comments, please send them my way. Go to carlostonight.com. There's a form on there. Um, or you can just email me directly at askcarlostonight at gmail.com. That's askcarlostonight at gmail.com. I look forward to reading all of them. And um, you know what? Send me your favorite quotes, too, because I like that. I post quotes every day. So um, send me your favorite quotes, your comments, your questions, or maybe even a good joke like this one. Why is Peter Pan 
always flying because he never lands. Get it? Never lands. Never lands. Never land. Stop. <laughs> Conversation with the people who were with me. I recently went back home to visit my family in South Florida. It was my first time seeing them in person since August of 2019. That's a long time. Thank goodness for FaceTime. So for my trip, I made sure I got tested for COVID. I, um, and I have a funny story about that. Um, okay, so I don't have a vehicle right now. And so I made an appointment to go get tested. And I took an Uber to CVS. I got out and I was like, well, where's this big line? And I ended up going in the store and I asked the pharmacist, you know, where the line was. They asked me if I had an appointment. I said, yes. They're like, just drive up, go to the drive through. And I said, I don't have a car because nowhere on the website said I needed a car. And so, um, so I was kind of bummed out and my plan was to get an Uber, go back to work and call it a day. So when I ordered the Uber, the original Uber who brought me to CVS was still there. So I hopped in the car and right before he left the parking lot, I said, hey, would you mind going through the drive through so I can get my test? And he said, sure. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So he waited in line. And then once we got to the window, I did my COVID test in the back seat of his car. So I stuck that thing up my nose. And I said, this must be the craziest thing you've ever um, experienced. And he said, no, I've seen crazier. And I was like, all right, I'm going to give you a big tip. <laughs> and so I ended up giving him a big tip for being patient and kind um, so that I could take a COVID test so that I can go home and um, make sure that I was safe visiting my family. And so um, when I when I was at the airport, I made sure that I was double masked and um, I was socially distant from everybody or well, as much as I could. And then um, what else? I wore gloves. In fact, since the pandemic, that's all I've been wearing, masks and gloves. And when I leave my place... My mask never comes off until I return home. And uh, what else? I have my food delivered to my house. And that's life for now, at least, right? Okay, so I promise I won't give anything away. But over the holidays, I watched Wonder Woman. I have to tell you, I wasn't impressed. In fact, it was kind of slow for me. I uh, fell asleep in the middle of the movie and... I promise I did watch the entire thing. I wasn't too excited about the villain, and it was just okay for me. The original one, though, blew my mind. It was so good. I just hope that part three is better. Um, I did have a, f a favorite part in the film, but I won't share it with you because it would give, it would be giving it away. So I'm going to leave it at that um, and tell you to... Go check out Wonder Woman out in theaters and HBO Max. So check it out. Who knows? You might like it. Um, so as I mentioned, I took a trip to South Florida. It was my, I think it was my second best Christmas I have ever had. The first one was when I was a kid living in Chicago. My family all bought me He-Man action figures and it was the best because it was my favorite cartoon of all time besides G.I. Joe. And it was just the perfect Christmas. Family, laughter, food, everything. It was cool. This one's for you. This year, we all gathered by the Christmas tree a few hours after Christmas dinner. It's our tradition to open presents at midnight on Christmas Eve. We, um, we had a whole bunch of presents this year from Santa. Watching my mom and my dad, my sisters, my nephews, my niece, and my grandma all open their presents was a special moment for me. Watching them laugh and just seeing their reactions made my night. Everyone, everyone was happy and um, they were grateful. And 
I just sat back thinking how blessed I am to have these beautiful individuals in my life. I took a moment to take it all in because that's a memory I want to hold on to for as long as I can. 2020 sucked, but my family made it a good year, a great, a blessed year. I hope you had a good Christmas, and I pray all of you listening have a blessed new year. And Remember, take a little time to enjoy what you have, what you have been blessed with, and the people who are in your life. Carlos Tonight is produced by yours truly, Carlos Correa. My theme was written and performed by Skingalis. Stream Carlos Tonight every other Wednesday. For more on the show, visit carlostonight.com and let's connect on social. Carlos Tonight is available wherever you get your podcasts, including Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, and now we're on YouTube. Thanks again for your time and support. I will talk to you soon. Adios. Oh.